Hello there and welcome to another Christmassy themed video. Well, it's not Christmassy themed, but yesterday I tackled actually making all of the custom CMFs that I had a video out in January. Today we're getting the December video out of the way and finishing reviewing all the Christmas sets. Now these aren't actually sets that were gifted to me, but for my fiance and she has kindly rented them to this channel for a quick review i'm going to be reviewing the hungarian horntail the harry potter patronus stag and the minecraft axolotl in this video so do stick around i'll try and separate them in the timeline so you can see which ones will be being reviewed at which point but i think let's just get straight into the hungarian horntail and taking a look at this hungarian horntail it's very similar to the Hedwig, which I will be getting in a second just to compare sizes for you. But look at the detail on all the spikes coming down the back and it even sort of continues to the tail, which is, I would say, fully poseable. I guess it's not exactly flexible. There are a bunch of different joints there, but the tail really does come all the way up and can be molded to fit with any of your displays. Because there is a ball joint right at the start of the towel here, you can curve it back and it just sticks out to where the feet do. So if you're worried about having enough shelf space behind it, if you want to display it like this, though, honestly, I think displaying it on its side is the best angle. And you can always just tuck the towel around the back. But it is, of course, from the later Harry Potter movie. So we do have a, as far as I'm aware, exclusive and completely brand new minifigure, which we can take a look at just pops off the stand there is on the same sort of display piece that we've actually got Tinkerbell on for our Disney castle display which I'd recommend I guess pushing the dragon by the base as it doesn't want to go any other way but if you can see Harry and it's not too glary perhaps that is a better look you can see it's the same I don't think the head and hair well the hair is definitely different to the typical Harry I don't think the headpiece is too unique. It's mainly the costume and specifically the printed arms that Harry has. He has these nice yellow stripes and stars which match his outfit in the scene. Lego have done a really good job and it's a really nice Harry to have if you don't already have some variant of him. I think this is a fairly exclusive figure. So either way, it's very nice to have and where you clip him to the base, you can see just at the bottom of your screen, as long as the dragon don't catch up to Harry first, you do have a nice golden egg, which of course is the point of Harry being chased by the horned owl in the first place. There is a stickered plaque just on the bottom, which you can see. It's a very nice quality sticker, actually. It would have been very, very nice to get it printed. But alongside that, you get two more stickers just up here for the dragon's eyes, I believe. They're the only three stickers in the set. It's not too bad to only get three of them. And as I say, the dragon build itself is quite nice. It's on one of the hinged teeth brackets that Harry is on. So you can only really have him floating away or right by the dragon's mouth. It's not a problem. It's not going to deteriorate over time. These have stood the test of time for a few years. But the main mechanism of this dragon is of course having the wings flap which honestly is amazing i know other brands have tried to copy this but i just don't think that they've got lego's technique down to the t we've seen it with hedwig hopefully we see it soon there are a few other creatures they could do this with and definitely for a fallen order set from the end of the game or i'd love to just see this in star wars for it to be fair i'm a big fan of the harry potter sets but I definitely want to see some sort of flying creature hit the Star Wars theme. But as I said, I will be getting Hedwig. So if we get Hedwig to compare, you can see this dragon is, I'd say as far as the wingspan goes, about the same as Hedwig. Of course, we have to rotate Hedwig's wings as well, just to show you how that feature works. I feel like Hedwig is definitely a bit more fragile than the dragon. There's definitely some tension around the back here when you're pulling it up but for the dragon i guess the wings are a bit lighter and it just works that little bit better so if you have hedwig this is going to go amazing next to them and i just really like all the detail on it because hedwig is well he's an owl he's a white barn owl and there's not too much detail i like the little bits of black which have definitely provided a lot of detail and 
you can probably see just how dusty this model is. It definitely needs a dust in before I put it back. But the Hungarian Horn Towel is a unique set. I don't see us getting another Hungarian Horn Towel anytime soon in any sort of play set because this does look pretty minifigure scale to me. I'm not sure if there are measurements out there. I know certain things are changing, especially from books, because there's no exact measurements, unless there was when they were creating the book, but I don't think there's any exact measurements out there. And it's a really fun, I'm going to say it's technically a playset. You can twist this and move the wings. That technically makes it a playset, but it's also a display set. So playability, displayability, this set really does have it all. And moving on to the next Harry Potter set, we have the Expecto Patronum 2-in-1 build, which as you can see is too big for this view. But I'll give it one side on just so you can see the full thing. The horns on the stag are very well detailed. And this is the sort of colour I would love a Jedi Force Ghost minifigure to be given in. Perhaps translucent arms, translucent legs, especially based on the new vision legs, which do look amazing. And they could give a translucent cape or perhaps a translucent headpiece with this colour for the hair. We really do need some Force Ghosts. Now for this stag, the legs are near enough fully poseable. I mean, it is a stag. You can't bend it in unnatural ways. This looks very elegant of the stag to be posing in right here. And the face and everything is built very well. In fact, the only sticker in this set is this little bat actually i don't think this is no this isn't even a sticker this is a printed piece i did not know that that is amazing for lego to have included we spend so much time complaining about stickers that sometimes we forget that there are a few printed pieces in sets it makes sense the set is definitely expensive enough and that is why i think it comes with two minifigures of course it is a two-in-one build you can also build Lupin's Wolf Patronus, which I'll put an image up next to it. I was originally going to build it, but seeing how this has been put together, and I just think it's going to be a while to take it apart. So if we do catch this on sale, I might be tempted to pick the wolf up, especially if it's for cheap. But there's just so many. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a few exclusive pieces here. We have this nice decoration element around the legs to add that mystical mist around it i guess and it is on the lake that we see when harry calls his first patronus you can see that is actually the minifigure we've got and again we've got printed arms on a minifigure i mean i know lego are doing this now with the new tantive boarding that has fives with printed arms i couldn't see malak having printed arms but he only has red sleeves so it would be weird if they gave him a few creases and Hopefully we do get more display sets across all the themes with printed arms, but it's a very, very nice Harry Potter minifigure. And actually, it seems that the legs have been put on the wrong minifigures here. So I'm going to keep it like that. That is hilarious. We have a baby Lupin and a more adult Harry Potter. But Lupin doesn't come with any printed arms, does come with a cool dual-sided face, which is where he's sort of turning into the werewolf. If I'm getting any of this wrong i do apologize i do definitely need to go back and watch harry potter once we're done with the x-men movies but the stag is so nice this head is actually finished off on the top with this nice glittery translucent blue piece which is the same style to the slopes that come in one of the sonic sets and that goes for a few of the pieces around here this is the same glittery blue and I believe this one by one corner tile looks the same and then we've got a few just normal translucent light blue pieces around and this actually seems to be a different shade to the light blue. It might just be because of the bricks underneath. A nice few flowers around the bottom to finish off this set and as I said if you get two you can display them next to each other and you get a bonus jacket that you can give to one of your other minifigures but Amazing minifigures. I really like the base that it sits on because it's black. It's just out of the way. And if you didn't want the banner, you could even display it this way round. And just before we go on to the actual little house, I would like to point out again, these three by three rounded bricks that are being used in so many sets. Lego like are actually getting all the sets that needed this piece out. And it's definitely a piece that Lego needed to make. If only they give us some three by three quarter circle plates and bricks to go along with it now the final set we will be reviewing in today's video is a bit smaller than the others 
but that doesn't mean that it is any worse because it does come with three technically four axolotls and even then you get another three spare axolotls that if you have the buckets lying around or if perhaps you're ordering buckets off lego you can make a few more as it does just look really cute this will be being added to our minecraft display in an underwater section alongside all our other animal houses and if we take a look first inside the house as there's limited space but they have used it quite well we've got a furnace going cooking up some food we then have a blue bed which is nice to see even though it's a little out of scale i've definitely have taken one of the plates off the top it's nice to see lego still including different color beds we've then got a little table over here with a torch on the right side and as you can see a sea sponge in the left hand side which is really cool because with all the corally pieces around here and it looks like it is underwater so that sea sponge has probably been what they use to clear out their axolotl house and as with all of these house builds the roof does pop off so you can access the inside a bit better than having the top of the axolotl in the way which is Again, a really nice play feature so you can get in there, especially when it's brick built into our display. It just enables us to still see the inside of the house. It's not the only part of the set that pops off. And no, I'm not talking about the Minecraft figure. Instead, this sandy part does pop off to reveal the hidden treasure that has been inside. And if we take a look at what is in this hidden treasure chest, you can see there is a bunch of different diamonds and perhaps a nautilus shell in there somewhere and some gold ingots which is really cool that they've included it however the only problem with this set i will say is they've still got handlebars on the sides of the chest i understand for other themes that it means that minifigures can have them but if they were to remove them and give us a chest that didn't have them it's just so much closer to the minecraft double chest which i understand Perhaps a single chest isn't too great because there isn't much space. And I have actually fold off the sides of these. You can sort of see the marks where the handles were a little bit. But I fold them off, sanded it down. And it's just so much better, of course, for this set in particular. It would just fall straight through the gap they had because the handles are what's keeping it up. But I really think that LEGO should give us a no-handle double chest. That is why we've got the flat top for the chest. So that it looks a bit more like the Minecraft one. So the next step is really the handles. And hopefully one day soon we will get an official Lego piece that you don't have to break apart for it to look as good as it can. But this just does rest into this slot. And as I said, the handles are actually what's keeping it up. So it is quite a nice design. And then the sand goes on top covering it. I'll definitely have to add this into our lego minecraft display at some point and because of the poly bag that we got at the start of last year january 23 it's just come back in an extra large minecraft magazine we now have the four different colors of axolotls and enough heads to bucket some around our city so it's really nice it comes with a drowned and a few other tropical fish one of which has been caught by this awesome scuba diver minecraft skin which is great to see so many minecraft skins it is quite a shock that we don't get as many Steves and Alexes, and I don't even think we've seen half of the other regular skins because they're so quick to throw in a Mandalorian with a Star Wars theme, yet we're getting unique minifigures near enough for every set. So hopefully LEGO do continue this going forward. I do love the animal houses, and hopefully very soon we can get our hands on the new turtle one to go on the beach above this. So that has been the last of the Christmas haul reviews that I have now managed to complete at the end of February, nearly two months later. Don't forget to drop a like if you did enjoy. Stay tuned for more awesome LEGO content and may the bricks be with you always. Mm -hmm.